why is it so hot today? It's never this warm in the UK, but oh well, a video has to be done. So excuse me if I die of heat stroke halfway through this video, okay? But honestly, why is it so hot today? Did the whole of the UK just turn into an AMD GPU? Clever jokes aside, today we'll be talking about some of the more worrying behaviors that AMD have recently shown when it comes to Radeon cards. Because despite the fact so many people are excited to see what big Navi will bring, AMD has fallen into quite a few potholes in the recent years when it comes to the graphics cards. And these are some of the same mistakes that the new big Navi cards may also commit when trying to, you know, compete with the upcoming RTX 3000 cards. Let's start by talking one of the biggest failures when it comes to AMD graphics cards in the recent years, and that is the Radeon 7. At first, we were so excited for this card. With a 7nm card that promised to compete with some really high-end NVIDIA graphics cards. And that was also at a point where NVIDIA graphics cards were becoming really expensive with the new RTX 2000 card. So many people hoped that the Radeon 7 would try to, you know, inspire competition so that NVIDIA would drop the prices. Uh, and none of that happened. Because the Radeon 7 was a mismatched mess. Its performance was comparable to that of the mid to high tier NVIDIA offerings while having for whatever reason 16GB of HBM2 memory and for those of you that don't know HBM2 memory is a type of memory that's way faster than your normal GDDR6 that's included in graphics cards and also way more expensive and also again, and also no one needs 16 gigs apart from like really high-end professionals. And also the price was actually ridiculous for the performance you were getting. In fact, there are rumors that over half of the price came from the HBM2 memory alone. 16 gigabytes of really high-end memory for a graphics card of poor performance just didn't really add up. It was a complete failure of a graphics card that AMD discontinued very shortly despite all of the hype around it. So I guess it's pretty easy to address what went wrong, right? Don't include 16 gigabytes of memory in a card that doesn't even perform super well in the first place. In terms of memory, I think Nvidia has it down pretty well. 11 gigabytes on the flagship card, then all the cards down, then the next card's down having about 8 gigabytes all the way down to around the 2060 Super and then for the Bree really budget cards around 6 gigs of GDR6 memory. Now quite a few years have passed since Radeon 7 so implementing HBM2 memory now is probably a lot cheaper so if AMD find a way to do it in an affordable way then that would be a great way to boost performance because HBM2 does definitely boost performance having that really high bandwidth of memory does help but they should only do it if it actually makes sense and it's possible to do so on the cheap or maybe they could do something like having some of the lower end cards be on GDDR6 because let's be honest that performance probably wouldn't change too much from HBM2 memory but maybe they could just have the flagship be with HBM2 or maybe even have the vice flagship be HBM2 as well and please don't price them as ridiculously as the Radeon 7. Now let's talk about less of a failure but still a very very weird time for AMD and as of the Radeon 5700 and 5700 XT they were released along with the Virgin Ryzen CPUs on 7.7 2019 and they were at first received rather well trading blows with the 2070 and 2070 Super. Firmals were pretty bad, their performance may have been in many cases better than 2070 2070 Super but it lacked many of the features that NVIDIA graphics cards have and so that card had little value for people who really wanted its features like say the NVENC encoder and there was also the fact that you could get close to 5700 XT performance if you just flashed its BIOS on the 5700 which was just like just wow that AMD you played yourself. So it was a very confusing launch and I did a few videos on it myself which I recommend you check out and as long as they don't pull something dumb like the user being able to get the performance of a more expensive card by flashing a BIOS but it shows that you know the new RDNA graphics cards may also suffer from some pretty big thermal issues but what kind of makes it slightly less likely that there will be doing the same mistake is that well both Microsoft and Sony trusted AMD enough to have their GPUs in the new consoles so clearly the firmware can't be that bad but yeah AMD if you want people to buy more expensive graphics cards don't have an option for users to get similar performance out of a cheaper card by just flashing a BIOS because that kind of just shows how much of the performance you're literally just locking behind firmware but let's talk about the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. And what's also exciting is that both 9th gen consoles will be supporting ray tracing, which means that these new graphics cards will probably support them as well. Which is going to also make it a very, very weird situation, which I addressed in this video over here. I recommend you check it out. Because this ray tracing race, which is a absolutely horrid tongue twister, 
it's going to be quite an interesting thing indeed. With two generations of ray tracing performance, I still think NVIDIA will probably run away with it, especially since they also, you know, learn to market ray tracing a bit better. Again, we'll just have to wait and see. Maybe the RDNA 2 performance in ray tracing will be just absolutely amazing and we'll all be flawed and NVIDIA graphics cards will just be worth it by comparison. We just have to wait and see. But if they don't, for whatever reason, have ray tracing, that'll be a huge disservice. To AMD. So hopefully they try to do whatever they can to actually bring ray tracing to these cards because otherwise that is a major feature that's finally in this year starting to really become relevant for the first time. Like really finally big AAA games are starting to take it seriously and it looks like more and more people are being drawn to ray tracing. So hopefully, hopefully AMD will take that on board and have ray tracing. But let me know what you think that AMD is going to mess up with this launch because it seems like they always do. But are there any other big mistakes that I didn't mention that AMD did in recent history? Let me know down in the comments below. I didn't even talk about that, what is it called, the Vega Frontier Edition, which was this absolute hot garbage. And let me know what you think of this upcoming GPU war between RTX 3000 and big Navi graphics cards. I'm really curious to see how it's going to come out. And hey, if you love these videos for whatever reason, then maybe check out my Patreon, which is down in the video below. It's been one dollar a month because long way to having my channel and allows me to make way better content. Down there, you also find my Discord if you want to talk to me or was about this or whatever else, really. And I guess it's really it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in what I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. I need something to drink. This is ridiculous.